Anyone who does not give love does not know God. Yet anyone who extends His grace is a child of the Father. So thankful that you're a God of love, compassion, mercy, and grace. Lord, our world is so full of hate. If we could just love each other the way you love us, what a different world this would be. Help us love God. This is our prayer. Help us love, 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 oh love one another, love one another, for God you are love, oh love, love, oh love, love, love one another, oh love one another, for God. morning and happy Sabbath again. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come to speak to your people. Lord, I ask that you speak through me that I'm used as a vessel, that the message that I'm bringing today is from you and that your people will receive it the way you want them to receive it. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> that was a beautiful song. That's the theme of our message today, love. I will try to, to give it as much as I can. I'll start with a story of my own. As you can see from the screen, that's my family in a nutshell. My two girls my lovely wife and my son. They are grown now, but I brought them here today because I wanted to talk about them a little bit. I grew up playing sports, and I like sports. I play soccer, I play basketball. I play a few of my own. And when I had my girls, they were big enough, they could play. But my girls didn't want to have anything to do with sports. And it was kind of a little bit discouraging. Be careful how you act around your kids, the young ones. Your children will read your impulses and read what you're thinking. However, the older girl wanted to please me. So she joined a basketball. She tried to play basketball in a school. And we went to watch her play. I knew she was just going through the motion just to please me, but her heart was not in it. In the end, she ran into a post. And, you know, we had to end up in a dentist's office later on. But that was not the story. The story of that game was watching other parents screaming at each other, mothers, Screaming at mother, father, screaming at fathers. And that day, 
I told Angie, if you see me doing that, you need to hit me with something in my head. I thought that was really. Then my son came. He was, he was born a big boy. And he's the opposite of my girls. He liked every sport and play, and he was good at them. But we went to watch him play football. Uh, on the East, number 65. On offense, they gave him the ball. You got a first down, first down, and got a touchdown. And I'm jumping up. That's my boy. That's my boy. And then they put a defense in, and then the coach tried to put him back in there. Then I became one of those parents. I started talking to the coach. I started screaming, you can't, you're not paying this ball. Why are you playing him on both sides? I became what I didn't want to. And to the, you know, I looked, tried to see where Angela was. She was trying to hide herself because she thought, I know she was telling people, I don't know that man. Anyway, what would you do? That's what love, that's, Love, that's my definition of love at the time. That brings us to the subject today, love. Christians, we must reclaim love. If you live in this country or any other country for any length of time, you will realize that Hollywood is defining love for us. Madison Avenue is defining love for us through advertisement. The concept of law has been changed, it's convoluted. I will put a few phrases up here and that will explain what I'm talking about. Love my wife. I love my children. I love ice cream. I love my car. Now, if you're not an English speaker, you will be confused. We're using the same word. What is love? We're using the same word to describe all of this. What is love? Let's look at how Webster defines it. Webster says, a strong affection for another arising out of kinship and personal, personal ties. Okay, I will read, I can, I can see that far. I'm gonna read from my paper here. Personal ties and maternal love for a child. And the second one is an attraction based on sexual desire. I love my wife, for example. Now, is that the kind of love that God wants us to, to have for one another? Uh, I doubt it. This is because of the limitation of the English language we have to depend on the context in which the word love is used in order to properly define it. But yes, the Greek came to our rescue. We will use the Greek to define the proper love. I think Greek has four words for this one word. Four meaning, four words that, that, that define this love. And they are eros, Philia, Storge, oh, excuse me, I think I went a little too fast, and Agape. Now, we'll take a deeper dive into all of these definitions. This will kind of point us to the kind of love that Christ wants us to have for one another. Please bear with me. Let's take Eros, for example. 
is the Greek word for romantic, sexual, or passionate love, eros. We get this, we get this English word called erotic from this particular version. It is essential for procreation and can be the formation of deep, long-lasting bonds of strength and trust. When used proper in, as a proper noun, it refers to a Greek god of love. That's deviating from God's love there. Now we'll continue. This is the kind of love that we celebrate in the United States with a, with a holiday called Valentine's Day. Eros does not appear anywhere in the New Testament. However, it appears in the Old Testament. Judges 4, 16, 4 talk about how Samson loved Delilah. That's the first time I was using it in the Old Testament. That's the first definition of love from the Greek. Let's take a look at the second philia. Philia refers to a strong liking or a strong friendship. There are two examples in the Bible. First, first Samuel. You talk about, First Samuel tells us uh, that Jonathan and David souls were knit together. That's the first example in the Bible. And the second example is in John 21, 15. This is Jesus talking. So when they have eaten breakfast, Jesus says to Samuel, Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, Feed my lamb. That's the next example. Philia continued. To have a special interest in someone or in something. In our modern culture, we say we love things that we strongly like. For example, I used it earlier, I love my car. I love ice cream. Now, that's another definition. Now, the English language gives us just one word for all of these things. And the Greek came to our rescue. They have very different words for each one give you a proper meaning, a proper definition, and a context. Storge. To love, the love and affection that naturally occurs between parents and children. Love between husband and wife in a good marriage. In a marriage. That's the kind of love target is. It can also exist between siblings. An example of this occurs in Romans 12.10. It says, Be devoted to one another in love, in honor, in honor giving preference to one another. Then, the last one, agape. Agape is the nature of God, for God is love. In our custom today, we think of love as a feeling, but it is not necessarily the truth with agape love. Agape love is, agape is love because of what it does, not how it feels. 
For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. It's not, I didn't think he would want to do it. It didn't feel good, but it was the loving thing for him to do. The point of agape is not simply the impulse generated from feeling. Rather, agape love is an exercise of will. A deliberate choice. I was listening to a program last night. And uh, they said they call in question to pastors. And one of the lady, the question she asked was she's been in a loveless marriage for 18 years. What should she do? And it dawned on me she should have been in this church this morning to understand what love is, the meaning of love. Now, Let's take a look at what Paul, our scriptures reading here this morning, explain Paul's version of love, this agape love. It says, love suffers long and is kind. It does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed off. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, does not provoke, nor does it think evil. Does not rejoice in inequity, but rejoice in the truth. We're talking agape love. This is the kind of love Christ is demanding us to love one another it bears all things believe all things hope all things and endures all things love never fails well I, okay, if you can read that that's fine now how do we know God in love Knowing God through love. I beloved, beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. This is how you know God through love. Because He loves us, He tells us to love one another. Now, this is the true meaning of agape. We'll go, we'll set through it. <clears throat> it said, no man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is present in us. Being a Christian is not easy. It is impossible. But if we give ourselves to him, we can do all of this. Indulge me. Let's continue. By this, we know that we are able in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. We are able to do this because we are giving ourselves to him and he has given us his spirit, given us the strength to be able to love one another. And we have seen and testified that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever shall offer, whoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now, we talk about this agape love. And as we go along, we define four different kind of love here. But the one Christ is asking us to do is the one we just spoke about. It's called agape love. He actually gave it to us as a new commandment. 
He said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciple, if you have loved one another. <coughs> I got married about 35 years ago, and, oh, excuse me, when we got married, I got advice from friends and family about, you know, love is 50-50, you're in a relationship, is 50-50. And at the time, on the surface, it sounded like a very good idea. I mean, I got different advice from all kinds of people. But this was the one that stood out to me. Love is 50-50. On the surface, it seems like a very good advice. Until I met Agape. I started to rethink this. 50-50. What if I give 50 and she give 30? Does that mean I have to drop down to 30 to meet her? Or what if she give 50 and I give 10? Does that mean she's going to drop down to meet what I give? And I realized that that was the recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for failure. Agape says, especially to a person that I made a vow to. The vow that I made to my wife was to her before God. Now, like I said, being a Christian, I want somebody told me being a Christian is not for sissy. It's really hard. It's impossible. These things are very difficult. And what I try to do is, is apply these things before I do it outside. I like to see how it works on me. If I'm going to tell you how I, how I apply it. So there's a saying that says charity begins at home. It's the same for a reason. So if I'm going to love people on the outside, I need to start practicing how I love my wife. So I put that 50-50, I cancel it. It's 100 from my side. My promise to her, my vow was to her before, was to her and to my God. So I love 100. The way I love her is my business and God. The way she loved me is her business and God. For the first 20, for the last 20 years, I've been traveling around working to make a living for me and my family as a consultant. And she was home raising my kids and working too. And so for the last eight years, I opened my own company, and I'm no longer traveling. And you walked about 10 miles from home, 10 miles the most, 10 minutes from the house to a workplace. Every morning when she gets up, I get up with her, bathe, change my clothes, drive off to work, and come and sit down in my office and do what I have to do. This is every day. And when I'm done, if I'm not doing anything, I go and cook. And someday I clean the house. Now remember, I'm from a patriarchal country. I'm from Africa, where kitchen boys are to be outside playing. Only the girls in the kitchen. And I cook. I cook for my wife. I make her breakfast. I make her dinner for the next day for her to take to work. The years before I was traveling, she took care of our kids. This is my way of showing to her that I love her. We all need to practice that. It's not easy, but he called us to do it. Go and love one another as I have loved you. I use this story only because to love people is... Oh, we, we, we spoke about the different kind of love. That's not the kind of love. Christ is asking us to love one another. The love that he gave us is the one he asking us to give. And I practice this because this is what I promised to her and to God.
And if we need to do, we have to do that. These are our brothers and sisters. We ought to love them as Christ has loved us. Now, my story today is not a very long story. So I will close it with the greatest love story ever told. The love story between Hosea, I mean Hosea and Goma. Now this this is a love story. Let's go through it and we'll talk about it a little bit. Chapter one, Hosea chapter one, verses one, two, three, and then six through nine. We'll read it. The Lord gave the message to Hosea of Bari during the years when <clears throat> Uzzah, Jonah, Azza, and Hezekiah were kings of Judah. Now, I'm not, <laughs> these are Hebrew names, and so if I mispronounce them, please bear with me. Please forgive me. I'm saying I'm going through this message because I think it's important. This is a very important love story in the Bible that teaches us today what it is. And you will get the essence of the story as we move along. When the law said, when the law first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, go and marry a prostitute so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the law and worshiping other gods. So Hosea married Gomer, the daughter of Dab Dabhen, and she became pregnant and gave birth to her son. And the Lord said, Name the son Jezreel, for I am about to punish I am about to punish King Hehu. He would dynastic to avenge the murder he committed as Israel. I will bring an end, I'll bring an end to Israel independent. I will break its military power in the Jezreel Valley. Now we we'll continue here. So Goma became pregnant again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to Hosea, Name your daughter Lorohami, Lo not love, for I will no longer show love to the people of Israel or forgive them, but I will show love to the people of Judah. I will free them from their enemies and with the weapon and armies or horses and charities, but by the power as the Lord their God. After Goma have, after Goma have weaned Loharimi, she gave, she became pregnant again, and gave birth to a second son. And the Lord asked, Lord said, name him Loharimi, not my people. For Israel is not my people, and I am not their God. Now, if you if you listen into the verses, the second child and the third child, the writer of this story deliberately left out detail, giving us the impression that these two last children were conceived when Goma, when uh, Goma were in a prostitution mode. I don't know what happened to her, but she got involved in the outside and left her marriage and fully embraced prostitution and in the end got trapped 
and became actually a slave in there. Now, what a love story, eh? If you, if you stop here, you will start wondering, what kind of love story is this? But Christ, you know, he changes things. He changed things around in Hosea 3.1. He asked, then the Lord said to Hosea, go and love your wife again. Even though she commits adultery with, other, with another lover, this will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel, even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. Now, I don't know about you. The flesh in me, I will have to really fight this one. <laughs> I will really have to fight this one. But again, agape. If Christ dwells in you, you will do anything. And so Goma went out and started looking. Can you imagine this man was a prophet? It's a prophet looking in the wrong places in the town looking for his wife. You know, in our modern days, the gossip, mm, he's a pastor. Look where he, are, where he is. He's at a brothel. And people will not even know what is he there for. But it will already put it on YouTube. It will put it on Instagram. He's there looking for something. Can you imagine that? But he was faithful. He went looking for his wife. Because God commanded him to go and love government. He, to go and, 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 and get government back. He had to pay for her to get her back. Now, Hosea's story, when you first hear it, they say Hosea often seen as the prophet of doom. But underneath this message of destruction is the promise of restoration. Isn't that beautiful? The Hosea story, if you think about it, what does that bring you up to? Now, we will get there. <clears throat> Let's go. We already read this story. I just wanted to go through the detail. Hosea is a prophet told by God to go and marry a prostitute. He's done that. Even though every time he cheats, she cheats on him, he rejects him. Hosea led by God to keep going after her. He did this over and over until he get her. This story in the New Testament in Roman is much clearer for all of us. They color it in in the story. With the was Goma being the church. That's us, Goma. And Hosea is who? God. Why with everything that went on, this story tells us God will always love you. Although this love we do not completely deserve. This is a story of God himself. He used Goma and Hosea to explain the story of Jesus to us. This is the story of Jesus. God already owned us. We turn away by giving us, by giving our birthright to Satan. And he came to restore us through his love. He sent his only son to die for us. For people he already own. What is the greatest love story? Now,
Can you, will you die for anybody? No, I don't think so. But God came to die for us, Christ. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is the love that we're talking about. This is the love that he's asking us to give to one another. It's not easy. Love is not a feeling. It's a command. He didn't ask us. Please try to. He didn't suggest. He said this is the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say it was going to be easy. He said go and love one another as I have loved you. Now, in our church, like every other Seventh-day Adventist church, the belief in a Evangelism, we go out, hand out, blow, and all of these things. These gloves are really good to, to give out. These evangelism, they are really good to bring in newer people. But we need to make effort to love the one that are sitting next to us. So that when the one that we bring in come in, they see how we relate to one another. They will say, this is where I want to be. When Christ asks us to be the salt, that's what it means. You know, uh, when you're out there, sometimes it's smart to somebody else. Even if you're feeling bad and you're walking and somebody's walking, you might smile to them. They might not smile back to you. And in some cases, you smile. Maybe that's the only smile that person has seen for that day. That's the act of love. That love is not telling you to go and hug and kiss everybody you see. The act of kindness to one another is the act of love. Saying hello to somebody. Being there for them, smiling. How you doing, sister? So so and so. How you doing, brother? So so and so. Good to see you. That's all he's asking us to do. Be kind to one another. And I will close with this last statement. And please, if nothing else you're taking out of this message, please take this statement. Oh, excuse me. First John 4.20 If someone says I love God and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen how can he love God whom he has not seen? This is a very strong statement. He's telling us we need to love one another. You see me, I see you. He's not telling you to like me. He's telling, me, telling you to love me. It's difficult. I told you being a Christian is not easy. It's impossible. But through Christ, you can do anything. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this message. And I pray that it was received the way you intended it to be received. Uh, as we leave from here today, we ask that you be with us. Those that were unable to be here today, Lord, we ask that this message got to them through the power of electronics. Lord, we ask you be with us always. You promise us that if one or two are gathered together in your name, you will be there. Lord, I know you were here in you were in here today. 
and that this is the message you want your people to hear. This and many other prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. For our closing song, we have Esmeralda come up.